Welcome. If you walk out of the store, walk out the road southwest, you come into the kingdom of the townland of Minigahan. And after the 1986 The Store Writers Week, I wrote this piece entitled A Vision of Africa on the Coast of Kerry. On the coast at Minigahan, near Causeway, Nellie presides in the kitchen of her cottage at 85, exchanging the time of day with tourists, educating us. Nellie, who has never in her life been out of her townland, except the once. <laughs> Five years ago at 80, when she had a stroke, she was transported by county ambulance to the regional hospital in Cork. Do you know what I saw there? No, Nellie. What did you see? I saw a black man. <laughs> a black man? A black man? You should have seen his neck. <laughs> his neck? Oh, the neck of him. The lovely neck of him. The lovely, wet, shiny, rubbery neck of him. I asked him if he would let me put my hand on it. And he did. He let me. And it was all black, do you know? Oh, it was lovely, I tell you, lovely. <laughs> I have had the royal good fortune to have been invited to give poetry readings at Listowel Writers Week several times since I first read here in 1974. You see, Listowel is one of the principal kingdoms of Ireland. Once upon a time in the summer of 1974, our president's, in, our president's hometown of Enniscorthy, County Wexford, Michal MacLeamore asked me where I came from. I answered him, I was born in Dublin, my family are from Mayo, and I live in Cork. So, he said to me, pouring his two blue mascara eyes into me. <laughs> so, you are truly international. <laughs> This was as much MacLeamore the historian as MacLeamore the artist. For in Celtic and early Christian Ireland there were indeed 130 nations. And today, despite the depredations of Homo sapiens, we still have 130 nations. And chief among them is the nation of Listowel and North Kerry and beyond. <laughs> this this sensational festival is, of course, falling down with spectacles of all kinds, readings, book launches, prize givings, workshops, interviews, lectures, art exhibitions, theatre, film, music, morning walks. But it is all so much more than that. The Story Writers Week is its hinterland also. Minagahan and the Selton and Ballylongford, home village of Brendan Kennelly, and Bully Bunyan, where I played 18 holes of golf on the greatest golf course in the world in 1954 when I was nine years of age with my uncle Jim, a bank clerk in Newcastle West, who was a scratch golfer. And Moy Van, the village and home of both Gabriel Fitzmaurice and of the greatest Irish artist, philosopher, poet of the 20th century, John Moriarty. Of course, the Stowe Writers Week is about the Stowe how I'd love to give you my Fidel Castro speech on the stool. <laughs> uh, but it's a five-hour speech. <laughs> so, and 
another time. <laughs> Listowel is an Athenian under milkwood town. At dusk and at dawn you must walk and loiter its streets and lanes and bridges and riverbanks and gardens and street corners and parks and the square. Early this very afternoon I was loitering in the square. Next, the small square. When I met Bernard Farrell, last met nine years ago in Kinsale, and he said, it's great to be in the stool, isn't it? A breath of fresh air. And of course we were breathing great real fresh air, but he meant something else as well. <laughs> I first read, as I say, at the Stool Writers Week in 1974, when Nunshin McCrure drove over the hills and the mountains from Cork City, transporting myself and Robert O'Donoghue, the great, the wild and passionate Robert O'Donoghue poet, dramatist, essayist, and literary editor of the Cork Examiner. At Listowel Writers Week in 1982, I first bumped into your extraordinary president, Colm Jobeen. He introduced me to his great friend, Bernard Lachlan, then starting up his brilliant stewardship of the Tyrone Guthrie Centre at Anna McCarrick. In 1991, I travelled down on the Dublin Tralee train. I was reading next day in St. John's Church in the square. Just I was entering the door, attempting to slip in unnoticed, sick with the butterflies and the bats. I felt a hand on my elbow. I spun around. It was John B. Keane, so shy so reticent, so gentle, so unobtrusive, so kindly, so unbelievably courteous. He whispered, welcome to the stole, Paul. I won't disturb you now, but if there's anything. The next morning at the crack of dawn, his daughter Joanna drove me to the train in Tralee. Yesterday afternoon, and again this afternoon, I walked by the statue of John B. Keane in the small square under the Maid of Erin. I placed my hand on his elbow for a second, or two seconds. In 1997, here was Colin Tobin again, introducing me to another friend of his. Is there anybody in Ireland, in the world, in the cosmos, who is not a friend of Colm Tobin. <laughs> uh, this was a hombre called Finton O'Toole. Colm Tobin drove the three of us out to the seaweed baths in Ballybunion. <coughs> in my bath, next stall to Finton O'Toole, <laughs> I heard myself lustily singing, singing out, Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy, and there is no place I'm going to, except the store. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. In the jangle jangle morning, I'll come following you to the, to the store. Towling down, there was a strange look in Finton O'Toole's eyes <laughs> that has never left him. <laughs> that look. In 2010, I met here in this very hotel, The Arms, the great English novelist Jane Gardham, and I had dinner with her. Imagine. Nor must we forget it was out of season the Stroll Writers Week events, such as in November 1975, the launch of Michael Hartnett's great book, Kulu Ija, the retreat of Ita Cagne, the great audience that attended, and how, after Mike's reading and my own, a woman tongue-lashed me for having read a poem opposing the provisional IRA. This is what the Stroll is all about, the poetry of meeting people by chance. 
reluctantly, I cannot now read through this year's programme with you, but it is, of course, a roll call of maestros and new song birds and new song tigers. However, I cannot refrain from signalling out the presence here this week as part of Operation Education of a Kerryman who in his time has been the greatest English literature schoolmaster, not only in Ireland, but in all of these islands. I refer, of course, to the Pleiades of Killarney, Mr. Niall McMonagall. In, conclu <laughs> in conclusion, I want to thank you, the audience, who, for 43 years, 43 years, have come to Listowel to listen to us writers, musicians, storytellers, and players, and not only to listen, but to make us feel appreciated. Without you, the audience, we are nothing. A work of art, be it a book, a novel, or a volume of poems, or a biography, or a painting, it does not exist literally ontologically does not exist until it is perceived and experienced by you, the audience. And remember, we are all members of the audience. Secondly, I want to thank and salute the Arts Council for their continued crucial support of the Stowell Writers' Week, of other festivals, large and small, up and down the country. Here I may, pa may pause to acknowledge the new chairwoman of the Arts Council, Sheila Pratchka. She will surely spur the Arts Council onto greater heights if she puts into it half of the energy and thought and commitment she put into the Centre Culturel Hirondé in Paris. Without the support of the Arts Council and its literature officers, such as Sarah Bannon, the Story Writers Week could not mount a festival of such magnitude and colour notwithstanding the aid given by all its other very generous sponsors and by the citizens of Listowel and North Kerry and beyond. Arts Council support has been core support. In the last two months, the Arts Council has come under sustained and malicious attack in the media, most especially in connection with its funding of Aesthona. There has been what Senator Fiach Machanil in his address to the John McGahern seminar 10 days ago, called, quote, a lazy witch hunt, unquote. This ignorant and vicious witch hunt is the most serious attack on the Arts Council in its history, and therefore all of us writers and artists, and composers and architects, as well as organizers, patrons and supporters of festivals must stand four square behind the Arts Council. In 1974, John B. Keane was appointed to the new Arts Council, along with Seamus Heaney and 15 others. That particular 17-member Arts Council was possibly the finest Arts Council we ever had. And John B. Keane was reckoned by his fellow council members to have been amongst the most practical, the most conscientious, and wisest of that Arts Council. Later, in the early 1980s, John B. Keane was made a member of Aesthona, something he was quietly but very proud of. Finally, tonight, I must thank from my heart with joy and salute those three amazing vision women without whose courage, imagination, great good humor, and damned hard work, Listowel Writers Week would not be, could not be what it is, one of the world's greatest literary festivals. The vision woman, Joanna Keane O'Flynn, the vision woman, Eilish Wren. <laughs> the 
and the one and only waterfall of eternal laughter, <laughs> sparkling amusement, and perpetual courtesy, Maura Lou. <laughs> Have a great week. You are open. Thank you.